Hello friends, welcome back. How are you all doing today? I'm feeling a little bit better today than I was the other day, but I'm afraid it's absolutely freezing <laughs> where I am. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about the Letter J. I decided we're going to make a little mini-series talking about all the weapons, because while I have done it in bits and bobs across the videos, I haven't really made any specific stuff to have a look at and be like, ooh, what's the diamond back like? And then he only speaks about it for about 20 seconds of the video. Ooh. Anyway, you can tell how cold it is because I've got myself a hot water bottle. Can you hear this? I don't know if I was getting picked up on the on the uh, on the old audio there, but yeah, it's it's freezing. It's 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 UK winter time now, so we're all a bit chilly. But anyway, we're going to be using the letter on J in the stock and the cloak and dagger. We never use the cloak and dagger on videos. To be honest, I the cloak the cloak and dagger is really good, <laughs> but I'm I I want to play hard and fast, and I like the invis watch more. But you know, all three watches I made show very, very good. There's like an old video I made all about the watches and stuff in Highlander. Still very, very watchable. I still agree with pretty much everything I said in them. So if you want to see the decision making on choosing, feel free to go and look at those. They're actually like a proper little guide series. But anyway, I thought it'd be fun because we can use the Letter on J to do. For example, this engineer won't be expecting us to be right on top of him. Like this. Oh, am I not allowed to sap it? Sometimes the game's like... Did he just switch classes in spawn? This is an actual engineer. Okay, watch out for this. They're, they're going to take a little while to move out of spawn, so it gives us a bit of time just to sit here and be a CCTV ca Oh god, this is a- sorry. I was speaking, is that okay, Tungsten? Okay. Anyway, it gives me a bit of time to be a CCTV camera here as we go in and butter knife this engineer to death while he random crits us. <laughs> anyway, what was I even saying? I like the cloak and dagger, but I don't use it very much. It's very, very good for comms. In my earlier seasons of UGC where I wasn't- Oh, we should hide over here in case he hits us by accident. In my earlier seasons of UGC, when I wasn't too terrific at aiming, so it's like four years ago or something, I used to use it quite a lot. If you go look at the older POVs, it's a lot of them is just me using the cloak and dagger and giving comms, because that was what I found was consistent, was my comms giving ability. And that's what I used it for. We're about to die to a pyro. Oh! <laughs> That was pretty good. I'll give myself that. I don't do a lot of trick stabs, so I feel like you can give me that one. Anyway, I used to live it, I used to use it a lot for giving comms because, you know, even if you can't aim, or you've got a bad day, or it's a bit chilly, or the other team's way too good, it's a really, really easy way to, to, um, to still contribute to your team, because I used to, quite early on, I made some quite good friends with people in uh, high divisions, so I used to merc quite a bit for, like, um, High Panda, for example, in Prem, even when I was only playing, like, you know, high... So, while my aim wasn't terrific and stuff, which is what I basically use now to play, at the time what I used was a lot of communications and timing picks and stuff, and the Cloak and Dagger is just what you use for that. Sorry, Angie, I didn't mean to take your health, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh god, I'm so sorry. Anyway, we can go and talk with the Letter on J more, because I've been talking about the Cloak and Dagger so far. They do fit very, very, very well together. The Cloak and Dagger kind of takes god's years to recharge. Oh god, yeah. I normally use the kunai as well, I just realised. If I'm trying to backstab people recently, I always use the kunai, so I've kind of forgotten what to do when I'm on fire. I'm too used to it putting... Fist me, please. <laughs> anyway. Cloak and Dagger and the Letter go together really, really well. I don't quite remember the exact cloaking times, but it's about... like a three second increase or something in cloak time, which is quite decent. It basically just makes it the Invis watch. And the whole shooting and getting cloak back, this is the one watch... Uh, I'd actually find that really, really useful. Not only obviously, obviously it's useful with the dead ringer and stuff, but... Oh, well, you know, crits do exist. That's okay. We did deserve that frag, because we got the butter knife sound effect, and he was on low health, but... That's alright. We can butter knife him later. They go really, really well together, because it means that you can play in the kind of aggressive style that you do with the invis, but also... Purely, purely, purely knife. Like, this loadout, you are not going to be gun spying anyone with this loadout. If you are someone that just hates the gun, or perhaps... You don't think that you do too well, you're running a full guns by loadout. This kind of, you know, Letranger stock and Cloak and Dagger is really good. I'd also, I'd, I'd recommend thinking about, uh, between using the stock and the, the Spicicle on this one. Just because, because you are knife only, losing your knife to, um, to, to a pyro flame is huge. Because that's literally all of your use. Are you going to sit on there and flamethrower check with your engineer? Are you- are you really going to- this is a pub, this is a Valve 12v12 pub or something. Are you- are you re- really? Really? Well, alright then, let's go like- let's go like spawn camp or something. <laughs> but yeah, we can go back onto to Le talk. Normally I don't consider- I consider it a huge side effect, the fact that you can shoot and get cloaked back. It's not my main use of the gun. It's obviously, that's all it used to do. 
It didn't used to do anything but give you your cloak back, and the Le Tranger, therefore, was really, really bad. It was alright with the Deadringer, because you could run it with the, uh, the Saharan Spice set. <laughs> uh, so it's useful there, because the Dead Ringer used to be a bit shittier to charge. You, you, I mean, it worked for that at the time. Nowadays, though, everything regens your cloak. The cloak and dagger didn't used to regen on ammo pickup like this. It used to only be the Invis watch that did that. So it was a boon, and to be honest, I still consider it a boon. If you're going to be running cloak and dagger, most of the time I would recommend using this. It's all right if you're going to be playing a really slow match to use it with the ambi, cloak and dagger ambi, purely because. You can basically just use it to pop in out of nowhere and get a sniper pick. Oh, I missed the uh, the the matador. Though. Maybe I can get the yeah, get the understab. It's also, I don't. I'm not a big trick stabby guy, but once upon a time, it used to be what I found fun was running around trick stabbing people, as everyone probably did one day. That's probably that's why I've got well, my my stock knife has like wherever it is. Yeah, I've got like thirty three thousand kills on it. That's because I used to just run around pubs with the dead ringer. And just do that all day, so I found it really fun. I guess it's kind of ironic how I've developed from doing that to almost never using my knife and having full officials with zero knife damage, not even like a butter knife. Ah, oh, we could have gotten that spine. We're having fun though, so despite not using the dead ringer and this being a full pub, you know, there's spy checking pyros, there's snipers, there's that engineer who knows how to switch spawns and all that, so some decent players. We're still going on a decent little kill streak here. I would kind of also want to show off that you don't need the Ambi Dead Ring as, you know, the Ambi Dead Ring Spicicle to get a kill streak in TF2 as Spy. You can just play really slow carefully. These people are clearly not paying attention, so... That wasn't a backstab. I guess he flicked round at the last second. That's a bit unfortunate. Do remember that the models... It's been reiterated so much, but I want to start find someone that's AFK to show it off. The models aren't showing where their backs are. All the players kind of lean a bit to the right, because that's why they hold their guns. Just watch, like, this pyro, for example. He's leaning a bit to the right. His backs, like, it, it looks a bit more to the left than it actually is. That's not the case, obviously. The, you know, it's a complete straight line. It's a box. The backstab is just a box. But you can't look at the model. You have to look at where the player's moving. So if they're running straight forwards, they're probably just holding W. Their back's directly behind that. Don't look at the actual model. So I, I don't know if that's a very, very good description, but hopefully you kind of loosely understand what I mean by it. In that, if you're trying to backstab someone, like that heavy over there, it looked like it should have been a backstab, right? Because I clicked on his model's back. In actual fact, the heavy probably dropped down and then flicked at the last second. So I was looking over his left shoulder. On my screen, it looked like I was clicking on his bank, but in actual, in the actual case, I was not. So who can we get here? The scout's going to run past. The pyro's going to spy check, and there's another pyro that's going to spy check. But uh, wow. Well, this guy's probably going to stick down like a teleporter or something. Maybe he's going to level it up. Are you going to go back? What? Okay, so they're just going to sit around spawn. Maybe I can like come over here. I'm going to undisguise and shoot him like once. Come over here. Come spy check me over here. And then if we just, do you think? <laughs> There you go. That's that's like a little like Metal Gear Solid thing you can do, where you can like pull people away. They get so up their own bottom spy checking. That um. Oh, I missed the uh, backstab there. That's all right. No worries. Norm normally I wouldn't really try stuff like that. Normally I just shoot him down, but I kind of wanted to hope that I could get the corner stab there. I do want to show off because normally I always say use your gun for everything, and I still recommend it. If you can use your gun for everything, go for it. But I want to show off that the strength of the left is that you don't have to. Doesn't really go too well when you uh, you miss the corner stab on the pyro, but that's all right. Trick stabs aren't meant to be reliable. Here I would have just tried to shot the pyro, but you know, walk a couple of extra seconds. The reason I like shooting is because it's consist it's consistent. If you chase a guy for ten seconds and shoot them for ten seconds, they'll take that much damage. If you chase someone for ten seconds and then they turn around and you miss the backstab, then well, you've just wasted a huge amount of time. Also, butter knife. I I do joke about it. But I, I, butter knives are actually huge. They use the way the backstabs, or not even the backstabs, the way the butter knives work, they're not immediate like backstabs. They are a melee hit. So they don't, they are, they have a warm up. They're not immediate like backstab. Are you not going to trick stab me? Okay. They're not immediate like, um, excuse me? They're not immediate like backstabs. So there is a wind up on the butter knife animation, despite the fact it plays the sound. Does, wow. I guess he'll just look at us at the last second and set us on fire. That's alright. So, so, so you do have to remember, it is a melee, so it's just like the power jack or something. It's not an immediate hit. So when you're using the butter knife, you swing a little bit before you're in front of them to hit them. That's how, like, at the start of the game, remember, I hit that engineer three times and he didn't hit us once. I was just doing a normal melee duel, like you would if you're playing, like, pyro or something. However, that 40 damage, it 
doesn't use the same hitbox that your gun uses. It actually uses a way bigger one. It uses the hitbox that projectiles like the rocket launcher uses. Remember, characters have two sets of hitboxes. They have a giant projectile hitbox that they use for, funnily enough, projectiles. Stuff like the mini... not the minigun, sorry. Stuff like the rocket launcher, the... The, the rocket launcher, the grenade launcher, the sticky launcher, all that. I think the flamethrower uses the projectile hitbox. I don't see why it wouldn't. And it is particles, but I'd imagine it uses the projectile hitbox. Yeah. Oh, we can we can play against these spies. Come here. Oh, he's playing spy properly. We can't trick stab him. <laughs> oh god, for the first time in my life, I'm fighting against two spies doing the thing that I normally do. It's like the switch situation. But um, anyway, melees use the projectile hitbox, which is humongous. So if you're having difficulty, for example, hitting a sniper in super close range, butter knife them. The, the hitbox on the butter knife is actually a lot bigger than hitting a body shot at that range, and you're pretty much guaranteed to do it if you can see them. So I'm going to just see if I can show it off. You see how I'm looking off the left-hand side of my screen when I was trying to melee that sniper? Pyro, really? The pyro really just ran into a heavy to try and kill me. <laughs> oh, weird man. People do that. They see a spy and they lose, they lose their everything. Also, by the way, as a result of it being really cold, my aim is going to be bad. That's perfectely fine. I'm hopefully, hopefully people can relate with that. When you've got like cold hands, it's really hard to play the way you normally do. It's like, well, I missed that backstab. That's perfectly normal. That was like a really reasonable backstab to miss, actually. I shouldn't have really gone for it. Again, yeah. I've gone from someone who used to you exclusively use my knife to someone who exclusively uses their guns, so you do kind of lose the edge a little bit. People like that where they stand still, a lot of people seem to just kind of like stand perfectly still when they de when they descope on Sniper. Like if they're using the Machina, they have to descope to hit. They have to like descope. I don't know why he's descoping. <laughs> what am I even saying? Some people just stand still on a sniper though. Those are fine. But if, if for example, if you're on trying to headshot this sniper and body shot him, just headshot butter knife. Oh, there you go. You can show off the hit marks on the on the butter knife. I don't know if it works on play. Actually, I don't know if player friendly players use the projectile hitbox. But yeah, look. You see here, I I'm missing the medic with my gun. You see how the bullets are going against the wall? Yet it was playing the melee hit hit sound. That's because on uh, butter knives it uses a giant hitbox. It's like this big. This is like the size of the projectile hitbox. Do you want to stand still there for me? Yeah. So projectile hitbox is like the size of the model. This this would be a miss if this was with a gun, whereas this would be a hit with a knife, if that makes sense to you. So I wanted to explain that quickly. Butter knife people is actually good. It's, it's basically a guaranteed hit in close range, whereas with the gun, you can miss. You can go through their feet. Engineer still has a... Or maybe they fixed it, but the engineer used to have a hole in his crotch that you could shoot through. Butter knife obviously wouldn't go through it because it's a giant box. Okay. <laughs> Go back, let's go back to the letter on J conversation. What more is there to speak about? So while this isn't Highlander, so it's a bit hard to talk about this, when it comes to timing stuff, the letter on J lets you do it really, really, really well. Wait, butter knife join me. Don't use your gun, that's what you're meant to do. <laughs> that was a proper spy. I'll take your I'll take your gun as solace. He was a proper spy, he was playing the class properly. In Highlander, the easiest way to contribute by far as spy is to time saps with your team. I'll give you a good example. Bad water lust. You want to drop down, sap the. <laughs> Bad, water Bad water lust. You want to drop down and sap the sentry as your team ubers in. Sounds fairly obvious. Guess what? Having like an extra, you know, 20, 30 percent. I actually don't know the percent on the cloak. I think it's 25 percent extra cloak, isn't it? 40 percent cloak duration. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Apparently. Yeah, 40% actually sounds about right. I think the Invis Watch goes from just about 8 seconds to just about 12 seconds. That's a huge amount of time. When it comes to timing, your combo would be like, okay, can you push in 5 seconds? If you're not running the Letteron J and you just decloaked, you're basically... You can't. You're, you'll die. E really? Well, alright. So, the fact that you can time just means that with the Cloak on Dagger and the Letteron J, you can run all the way to the spot. You don't have to, like, crouch. You don't have to wait for Cloak to come back. You can just run straight to that spot. Wait and then be like, okay, I'm in position. If you weren't using the letter on J, it'll be a lot harder to get into position as the result of the fact that you just don't have enough cloak. Really, really good. When they nerf the ambi, presuming they'll do it in the same way that they're going to do it, I'm not going to use it, first of all, out of solace that it's going to be bad and not fun anymore. But uh, the revolver will be just straight up better <laughs> when it comes to damaging. But I'm still going to probably just switch off and use the letter on J a bunch. Like, stock spy has always been pretty solid. And on some maps, it's... it's it's just extraordinarily easy to backstab people. Like, some people... Some maps, people never turn around. Oh god, he's... 
got using his range on Demo Knight to try and best me. That's alright. Demo Knights are worrying. You shouldn't try and melee them. They've got that extra range. It's got range. But yeah. Uh, the just, just, just uh, some maps, it's just backstabbing people is so much easier because they all stand still or they all just go a bit AFK. Those are the maps. You can just run Lechranger, Invis, and you, you, you just, just go nuts. Go nuts in the back. It doesn't matter that you can't, uh, doesn't matter that you can't shoot them. Plus, when the ambassador's getting nerfed in whatever way they happen to choose, they may or may not do it in the way they're going to, I have no idea. The Razorback's also getting nerfed, so it's never going to be used on Highlander again. Like, it's, it's going to be useless. The main buff of using the Ambi is that you can kill those 120, 185 health uh, combo snipers that have the Razorback. When it's no longer being used, a huge buff of the Ambi is that you, know, you can two-shot them. That's going to be gone. <laughs> so, even more reason to run a stabby, 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 stabby loadout. And not in the American um, man who has a very nice voice. I mean, like in the actually hitting people with your melee kind of thing. Oh, hello. Watch out, Leon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Heavy, can I have the HP, please? Thank you. Yes, demo. Try and shoot the invisible spy and not the fist me, please, heavy. Don't do what I just did, by the way, which is walk through a tiny choke next to a spawn with a heavy. Terrible idea. Oh yeah, one buff I completely forgot about the Cloak and Dagger. It completely circumvents the whole Valve spawn outline thing. So if I was decloaked, they would see me through a wall just because Valve. <laughs> the Cloak and Dagger lets you completely circumvent that. And I guess that's a huge reason to use it. Like that was a pseudo... Wait, butter knife. Oh, that was a pseudo buff to the Cloak and Dagger in that it makes spawn camping good again. Previously, you could just stand outside the... No one's going to come out this door. Either. I don't think they know that spawn exists. Previously, you could just stand outside the spawn without really caring. And then they made it so enemies can see through walls, so, yeah. Good reason to use it. Less range just means that Cloak and Dagger's even better, so it's even better. If you want to spawn camp and stabby, 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 stuff, it's very good. And I mean, it doesn't do a lot of damage on revolver shots, but when it comes to cleaning up stuff, you still do have, like, six all-rightish shots. If you hit most of them, you'll probably kill someone. Like, that guy's 19. Doesn't matter what gun I'm using, he is dying. So, it's, it still does the job that Revolver's probably intended for, which is clean up. Clean up. Always been good for the spy. Someone's on really low health, you can basically just run in there for- I thought that was an invisible spy. <laughs> you can clean up people on low health. Still does that. It's just a good gun, if, if you don't know what to use. That's what I'm saying. I used to say the Revolver, but the Revolver doesn't give you the same passive kind of bonus. The Revolver only gives you a bonus if you use it. That is, it's consistent. If you're not shooting with it, it's basically no reason to use it. That's what I'm saying. It's solid. I, I'd recommend it. It's, it's, it's been a bit of an odd video describing it, but I'm hoping that I kind of showed it off in a weird little way and also used the cloak and dagger. Also, it's very chilly. But I'm also in the mood, so I'm going to also go and record another commentary so we can have lots of stuff coming out over the next couple of weeks. Oh, look, we leveled up. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Please do let me know if, you, if I missed stuff out. I've been a little ill lately, so I apologise if the videos have been a little, a little, a little funky, but this one, I've been feeling a lot better. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.